Okay, I'll just I'll just do the intro once again uh, in case we don't use the other one that I just did. I'll just do it to the camera and then I'll get to you in a second. So guys, welcome back to another episode of the Bampton Experience. Um, the second episode here on the new channel. First of all, um, on regards of me and also Hans Christian, we would like to say thank you for the support that we have received here in the beginning of the new channel and also the new Instagram site. Um, more than 2,000 followers and more than 2,000 subscribers, I believe, on YouTube as well. So um, yeah, it's awesome. Let's keep it going and let's build this community as big as possible, um, as quick as possible. So this episode is a little bit different. Um, obviously, the, we are not in the same room, me and Hans Christian. So um, so we used to be just sitting in the couch right over there. But since Hans Christian is not in the in not in town, he is in France um, playing the tournament all young. And I'm still here in, in, in Copenhagen, just came back from uh, yeah, from uh, from Switzerland yesterday. Um, but here we are. We are we are going to do this on on a Zoom call, trying to to create some content for you guys. Um, just because we are not at the same place, we should still be able to, to create something. Um, and I would say that it is it is um it's very possible that this is going to happen more and more in the future. I would say I think it's uh, it's possible. So let's see if we can get something done here. Hopefully it will work out. And uh, with that being said. Hans Christian, welcome to to the podcast. How are you doing? Thank you so much, Alice. I'm doing great. I can't wait to do this episode. I'm <laughs> sure it's going to be uh, amazing. We have a lot to talk about, right? There's been a lot going on since our latest episode, so it should be a, a cracking episode. Yeah, definitely. Um, a few tournaments, all England and also the the Swiss Open has uh, has just been played. But uh, but first of all. I didn't even knew that you were going to 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 play in All Young. No, I also wasn't one hundred percent sure that I I would be playing. Um, but yeah, I, I had to pull out of the All England with a uh, with an ankle injury, um, and and had to pull out of Swiss as well. But uh, during training last week, it it got better and better, and I tried playing some matches on uh, on Friday to see if I would be able to go here to All Young. Um, and yeah, it, it, it went fine. Um, no no real big issue. So we will try. And uh, yeah, I'm here to try and obviously win some matches and, and get some points. If I uh, if I get a good result here, the, the points are still big enough for me at this event uh, to make a uh, yeah, make a, a difference in, in terms of ranking. But I would say I'm just as much here to to just get some matches. I, I have only played one tournament this entire year. So it's uh, it's just because I want to play matches and I, I want to compete uh, again. And uh, yeah, this tournament offers that opportunity. I was here last year as well. And I think it's actually a pretty uh, well-run event. Um, yeah, so uh, I, I didn't mind coming back one more time. That's good. So so that obviously means that it's going well with your injury. So how, how I asked you on the Bampton experience for an update on the injury you, you just gave us a little bit here. How fast uh, were you back on court after you withdraw from the All England? Yeah, it actually took about a week. Uh, I withdrew against Kento on the Wednesday during All England. And the next day I was on court was uh, Wednesday, the week after. Because um, after I got back home to Denmark, I had to do... Uh, like an ultrasound scan and also an x-ray uh, to make sure there was nothing uh, visibly wrong with the uh, yeah with the angle and there was nothing to see either on the ultrasound or the x-ray uh, and I, I started feeling uh, more and more comfortable in the ankle as well so on Wednesday I started training uh, again uh, not at full speed but yeah built it up uh, from Wednesday to Thursday and then on Friday I was uh, I was going uh, full speed again so yeah it took about a week for me to to get back uh, to to full speed again that's good so no no pain whatsoever mm, no pain whatsoever it, it feels a little bit different compared to normal but it, it feels safe and, and stable and everything so uh, yeah I, I think I, I'm able to play uh, but for sure if I feel anything I'm playing down here in France I will uh, pull out again but I'm very confident right now that it's it's not going to happen but it's obviously not the highest prioritized event so if, if I feel anything I will uh, I will be pulling out uh, again but uh, that's definitely not the plan that's good. We need you to be. Uh, we need you to be ready for for the Thomas Cup. 
in in a little while we definitely uh need you there in uh at your hundred percent so be careful down there do not uh risk anything promise me that I promise you that, and Thomas Cobb is for sure the main priority. The European Championships comes before that, and then yeah, Thomas Cobb is the the main priority for this year for me. So I'm not gonna try and uh, risk anything to to ruin uh, those two events. That is what I'm uh, mainly focused on for for the next couple of months. That's perfect. But um, let's get uh, let's get into some of the topics that we have um, talked about that we should talk about uh, today on this episode, and uh, I think we should just start out with the all england um is there there is um yeah there there is uh, some things here and there but should we start out with is there any results any uh players in particular who surprised you or did something extraordinary that you didn't expect or something i think there's so many results and, and players that are that are interesting to talk about uh, i i barely know where to start like obviously Laksha Sen's run to the final uh, is one that probably hurts you a little bit but it is pretty extraordinary to see how he's uh, he's been doing this year and uh, yeah making a final and he he didn't even have uh, yeah I don't think he had the easiest way to the final either um, but if I had to single out one result that's more surprising than all the others it's it's obviously the uh, the men's doubles from Indonesia uh, Maulana and Fikri who won the event it's the first time they ever played the all england and they go out there and they just uh, win the event i think that that's pretty uh, pretty special and I, i would say even though those guys are talented and they've shown some some decent results before it, it's a huge shock for me at least that they could uh, that they could win the uh, win the entire event uh, so yeah that, that that's one i noticed the most what about you yeah definitely that's um that's crazy um to win your your debut at the all england to go on and win it uh, that's that's insane i would say <laughs> the same as you there's there's a lot to point out um yuta watanabe once again won an all england title and if i'm not mistaken it's his fifth all england title um victor axelson won his second and his fourth consecutive final in a row that's very impressive um Yeah, my my favorite Bamson player unfortunately lost in the final in in women's single and Se Young. She uh she she got close but she wasn't able to to claim the title. Um Yeah, there there's a there's a lot. Yeah, the sound was uh, just a little bit off here but I I I think I heard most of what you said on us. Um I think you finished off talking about the women's singles, right? Yeah, I, did. I, th- yeah, I did. think we need to just compliment the uh, yeah i think we need to just uh, ac- acknowledge what an insane event the uh, yamaguchi uh, had like I-, i was very surprised to see that she was winning so comfortably uh n- not just against anse young in the final uh, but also against chen yufei in the in the semifinal i'm uh, guessing that we are going to talk about the uh, chen yufei's uh, controversial way to the to the semifinal a little bit later but Uh, Yamaguchi went into that match uh, for me being the underdog, but she just completely uh, demolished uh, Yufei and also uh, yeah, again won quite convincingly in the final. So I think that's also a uh, a standout uh, result. But I think Yamaguchi sometimes she's not really getting a lot of uh, attention because she's like uh, this quiet character. She doesn't uh, she never shouts or yeah makes a big uh, fuss out of anything. She's uh, she's just playing at an amazing level and uh, yeah, all England was definitely uh, some of the best uh, we've ever seen from her. Was it her first All England title? Uh, I think I think so. I'm I'm not 100% sure, but I would think so. I can't remember she she won it before, so yeah. I would say yes. But Our viewers can correct us if we are wrong. Yeah, let 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 let's get some help from uh, from the Bamson Experience audience. I'm checking uh, her five matches right here, and I can see the only free set match that she played was actually against Saina Neval from India. Yeah, I actually uh, I was watching that match in the uh, in the stadium. I was there to watch something uh, something else. I don't remember what it was, but yeah, w- was watching that one, and uh, she was really struggling on one side of the court because of the drift, and uh, yeah, Saina was controlling that part uh, really well. Uh, but yeah, the, on the final part of the the match, uh, she she kind of uh, ran away with it. But it was quite close until midway through the uh, the third game. 
which was a bit of a surprise actually, because I don't think Sina has been in uh, her best shape for, for quite some time now. No, I I would agree. Sina Neval, the the former world number one, right from India. Um, she has definitely not been at her best uh, for, for for quite a long time. But um, yeah, she lost with seventeen in in the third to a really strong player and and the winner of all England. Um, should we just talk a little bit about Yuta Watanabe, Arisha Higashino? Um, so. It's their third All England title together, right? Uh, yeah, you're probably right. I just know that you're right that uh, Watanabe has five now, five titles, which is insane. And they're they're they they beat some some quite impressive pairs. I can see they beat defeated uh, Dechapol Sapsiri from Thailand, the world number ones, and in the final. Uh, I'm 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 really not good at pronouncing all these uh, names, but Wang Yu and uh, Huang Dongping from uh, from china 19 and 19 he is just <clears throat> i mean she she is incredible as well for sure i just think he's just a crazy um individual he's i mean he's really really tiny not a big guy and which shouldn't be um which shouldn't be an advance in a in a circumstance like all england which is a huge hole the the shuttlecocks is a little bit a little bit heavy. It's difficult to to win by attacking and stuff, but somehow he managed to to do it anyway. He's jumping so high. He he has so so many different tools in his uh, in his game, but he's just so extremely fast. He's a crazy crazy player, I would say. For sure, and I, I think when they play the best, uh, Arisa and and Utah, they, they they play some really really enjoyable matches just to watch because their defense is also out of this world. Uh, I didn't watch the entire mixed doubles finals, but but I wa- I watched parts of it, and it was just really mixed doubles at, at the highest level. I, I was surprised to see the Japanese win. Uh, I, I thought the the Chinese looked to be uh, back in in some of their Olympic uh, uh, condition. They were playing almost a, at the same level uh, for for some parts, but I, I think the Japanese really played out of their mind in the, in the final to uh, to get that gold. And it just it seems like they they or at least Watanabe especially, he, he finds something extraordinary when it's uh, when it's all England. Uh, I saw a reporter actually asking him if uh, if he's going to go for uh, Yobong Park, uh, the, or Park Yobong, the, the coach from, from Japan. He has nine titles at the All England, so he asked Yuta if he was going to go for uh, for beating that that record. And uh, Watson just said, yeah, may- maybe not, but... Mm-hmm. Like he, uh, he's not old at all yet, and he he's still going strong in uh, in in mixed doubles and also men's doubles. So there's no reason to believe it's not possible for him to uh, to get to those nine titles. I'm I'm really impressed by him, and as you say, it's I think it's quite surprising in an arena like the one in, in Birmingham that it, it suits his game uh, so well. I, I don't really understand why, but I guess when you just have the the level he does, it doesn't really matter what the conditions are. You can uh, you can win anywhere. Yeah, it's uh it's incredible. Um and Victor, fourth consecutive final, um second win and also not really under under much pressure at any any time in in the tournament. Um also a, an arena that suits him really well with the a little bit heavy shuttlecocks. Um it it makes a more physical game and he's definitely an incredible physical guy. Um <clears throat> but I think the 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 impressive thing about Victor is also just his consistency. Um, he rarely loses a game that he's not supposed to lose. Almost uh, never happen uh, to him. So I think that's uh, yeah, that's extremely impressive as well. Yeah, I think it's also it's quite fun that when he lost to Lakshya in German Open the week before, I remember you said to me that 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 was maybe the best thing that could happen to him just before uh, the All England. Um, yeah, like could could you explain what what why why you said that? It it made made great sense to me actually, especially given what then uh, went on in all England. But yeah, why, why was it you said that? I I said it I said it mainly because I think if he if if he was to play against Kunlebud in the final at the German Open, I think that could have also been a draining a draining match uh, physically. Um, so I think it was quite good for him to save a bit of energy. But also, Victor's, I believe he's the kind of guy that 
when he faces those uh, defeats and setbacks and stuff, it just um, adds to his uh, motivation and his hunger and stuff. So I think that he was, I could imagine, more hungry in that final against Lakshep because of the loss um, the week prior. Um, I, I'm 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 quite sure that that's definitely something that annoys him so so much that he's going to do absolutely everything to bounce back. So, so first of all, because he maybe saved a bit of energy, but also because I I believe it it fuels uh, his hunger to 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 get that one back. Yeah, and I I completely agree, and also see it as maybe some sort of. Re- I don't know if it sounds harsh, but like a small reality check for him that he, he realized after that match when he, he's playing someone like Lakshay that he cannot expect to like win it easily or get any easy points from just respect that he, he needs to earn it. He needs to work hard and stuff like that. And obviously All England was the main focus and the main goal of, of Richter. For sure, he would also like to win German Open, but there's no doubt that the real motivation was All England. So yeah, I completely agree. And I think it was... Yeah, for him, a uh, and yeah, with how it went on in all England, it, it was a, a a good way for him to to get even yeah more sharp and focused on, on the job he had to do in in Birmingham, and yeah, he was just incredibly impressive uh, all the way through. He was in in no trouble at all throughout that event. And and also also um, Lakshya got to play an extra match, and I mean he 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 did back to back finals in in germany and in all england which is very very impressive he has had a a crazy good year so far also won the tournament in india in january so he's um he's definitely a guy on the rise defeated me which is absolutely incredible uh very impressive performance (laughs) um no so i mean i am 100 percent sure that he was also quite fatigued in the final um back-to-back finals and and he played quite a lot of tough matches so that that's very very draining so yeah um i think when when i said that this might be the best thing for victor that could have happened i think i was uh i was kind of spot on yeah definitely it's one of the few times where you've been spot on with anything you said uh, I, I read an uh, an interesting uh, article on a uh, Indian newspaper with a, a long interview. Uh, it was it was focused on, on Lakshya and his performances the past uh, couple of months. And there was an interview with his dad, uh, BK Sen, who has also been coaching him for for quite some time. I'm not sure if he's still doing it. I I'm, I don't think so. Uh, and may, maybe some. Uh, but anyway, he he was saying that in a match like uh, the All England final, it's it's clear for Lakshya and everyone around him that he needs to work more on his attack from, from the back, especially that, that he, he's lacking a bit of uh, uh, power to, to put it on the floor um, compared to a guy like Victor. The, the reason why he could beat Victor in Germany was because Victor was committing mistakes and he, he was not being as uh, consistent as he was in, uh, in the All England final. But when his consist- consistency is there, Lakshya is still... Uh, uh, struggling a little bit to, to to score the points, and you cannot beat these top players uh, only by defending. So I, I thought that was quite quite nice to read as well. That that he he's not uh, content with where he is, or in any way he's he's still striving to be much better, and he, he's not there to uh, to just make finals. He, he wants to be one of the best, and yeah, there's no doubt that he he's improved a lot uh, for a long time. And I I really do think his defense is amazing. But I I also thought that his offense has improved. But I would I would definitely agree that it's it's not the strongest. Uh, strongest point of his of his game but i i also have to admit i was a little surprised to see he actually beat you on us could you kind of take us through what happened that match especially considering uh, how well you played the day before as well against the low can you um yeah i can try um so i would say first of all i was putting a lot of um focus on the low can you match um Ever since I lost the semi-final to him at the World Championships, I have been eager to 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 face him again and try to revenge that loss. So I've definitely been studying that match a lot, and um, yeah, I've just been thinking a lot about that match. Um, so I was very very happy with the performance that I was able to to go on and beat Low, 
uh, and still after the match, I was um, I was processing this match and you know just still being being happy and almost. I mean, you you'll you'll have to at some point. F- I mean, forget about it and move on because there is another guy waiting tomorrow who is extremely extremely good at the moment. Um, and I just feel like, I mean, underestimating is probably the wrong word because I know that he is really, really good at the moment and I saw what he did the week uh, before in Germany, but I just did not put as much um, focus on Laksha and on that match. So I think I, I had to I had to reset quite fast. Uh, I played a little late against Low, and then I played a, um, early on the day against Laksha. So I I had like 16, 18 hours to like reset and refocus, and I think I wasn't really able to do that. Um, um, so I mean, my game plan wasn't really um, that sharp, and my my focus wasn't wasn't as good as it was the day before. So I think. Just overall, my consistency, I was making too many mistakes and um, making the wrong choices on the court tactically and not being too sharp in my, when I should execute different different strokes and stuff, I wasn't really that sharp. So um, yeah, I, I think uh, I think I was, I was too focused on the first round match to, to really carry on in the tournament, to be honest. I would say it, I would say it's definitely become a lot better uh, for sure, but it's not up there with Lisi Ja and with Victor. Uh, I think that's uh, that's certain. But I think he has a, a quite okay attack, but but obviously not. Uh, it's not a top four in the world attack. I wouldn't say, but but it is quite sharp. And against me, when I did lifts with the wrong quality he was able to punish me right away so he was actually quite sharp there and hitting them very close to the lines and stuff but um but no i would agree that 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 is perhaps an area where he can where he can get even better because he's a um really solid player um not making many mistakes he's in quite good condition and um yeah has a very very good defense first of all and uh, and all the indian players has a really good net play so he also has that um but i think i think i think uh, men single is is at a weird place at the moment i think that you 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 see guys like laksha and guys like like lo can you um kunlavud uh brian yang so, some of these players is like suddenly a little bit not out of nowhere but but suddenly they are producing real good results and now you you i mean you can't you can't just focus on victor and kento momota and uh, you'll also have to, to 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 take these other guys into consideration when you think about who's going to, to win a tournament and stuff um so i think there are so many good men single players right now it's it's uh it's 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 a crazy tough uh field yeah for sure and uh, i think it was also interesting to see like the level of momota i, I think <clears throat> against me uh i didn't feel like it was a momota who was playing with a lot of confidence he also did not play well in, in german open losing to nishimoto uh, um in in, in straight games uh he actually played really well against Hio, and he he looked to be more confident. But then again, against Li Xijia in that that quarterfinal, he did not look like a guy who's yeah trusting his his level, um, or, uh, trusting his own game the same way as he as he used to do before. So yeah, yeah, I, th- I thought that was quite interesting, and I agree with you that it's it's not possible to discount anyone uh, basically from being able to to beat almost anyone I, I think victor is maybe standing out as as the the one guy to to beat at the moment but apart from him uh, yeah it's almost anyone's uh, anyone's uh, matches to uh, match to win uh, in in the current state yeah and i i i agree um with your assessment about Momota, I think it's 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 going to be interesting to see if he is able to get back to that level uh, prior to his car crash. Um, I think I think confidence is a huge thing for Momota as it as it is for everyone else, of course. But 
the thing ab about him back in the days what was that he just never ever uh, doubted his concept um do doesn't matter what the score is he's going to continue the same strategy he believes in his strokes and 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 yeah, his quality, and um, it, it seems like he's a little bit hesitant on the call right now. His defense is not the same. His um, his attacks is not that sharp. Um, yeah, it's going to be interesting to see if, if he can get back to to that level. Uh, I faced him out in Indonesia in the final um, on Bali, and I think that his quality was absolutely amazing there again. Um, so I, we have seen it a little bit also at the Denmark Open final against Victor. He seemed to be back to the to the old Kento at 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 some points in that match, um, yeah. But we have yet to see the the consistency that that he once had. Yeah, one hundred percent, one hundred percent. Should we move on and start talking about one of the other big issues from all England on us? The one about the the withdrawals uh, from from China, because we've had a lot of people asking us about it and saying that should be a, a hot topic for. Uh, for, for this podcast and I, I'm sure you have an opinion about it uh, as as I do yeah um yeah we should definitely talk about that and I, and I saw that once it popped up on um, on social media a lot of a lot of uh, you guys I assume were um, were commenting that this is a topic for the Bampton experience um go ahead and discuss this and we have discussed this rule uh, multiple times that we actually wanted the rules the rule not to be there and i'll just explain to the audience so there there's been this rule that if two uh, countrymen faces each other you cannot pull out from the from the match uh, if you do that then you'll lose your all your ranking points that you have gained in the tournament and you'll also lose your prize money um so there has been a lot of um, matches lately last year where where this rule was not a really good thing because and an actual injured player was forced to keep on playing um, because they did not want to withdraw and lose their points and lose their prize money. So just in many situations, this has been a terrible rule. And me and Hans Christian actually wanted it not to be there because it was punishing uh, the wrong players and stuff. But this rule is finally gone. But right away, we see that that um, that some players is is abusing the rule and i think hans christian can you just explain the situations that went on during the all england yeah well obviously the rule was removed i think two weeks or three weeks prior to all england uh, and there's a bit of back history to the rule that when it was implemented in 2014 it was uh, mainly because some of the asian countries and especially china but also in, in some events korea uh, was making these uh, withdrawals against the countrymen to obviously to, to try and save energy and, and give an easier path for for the the preferred players uh, to move on in the events and then at the all england uh yeah so like two or three weeks after the rule is removed we see for the first time in a long time that the there are two withdrawals uh, between uh, all chinese players so in the first round uh, chen yufei was supposed to play Zhang yiman in, in women's singles and uh, we also had uh, oh I'm just uh, forgetting which one was the other one uh, oh yeah there was also Chen Yufei yeah that's correct yeah He Bing Jiao in the quarterfinal against uh, Chen Yufei also pulled out and when it happened uh, everyone was just going crazy and saying yeah that's China back to doing the, the old tricks uh, and I, I was thinking the exact same, uh, but also thinking about it in retrospect, I, I'm thinking maybe I was in some ways a little bit fast to uh, pass judgment on, uh, judgment on them, actually. Because the thing is, with Zhang Yiman, she actually got injured in German Open uh, with her ankle, which is, is a fact that she I think she twisted her ankle. Um, so it, it shouldn't really be a surprise that she could not play in All England. What is a little bit concerning is the fact that she did not pull out until after the managers meeting. Uh, so by doing that, she made sure that there would be no replacement for her in the draw. Um, and there could be two explanations for that. Either they were hoping until the very last minute that she would be able to play, or they were thinking, 
we will just give Chen Yufei an easy path to a second round. And obviously, I have no proof of either of them, uh, but I know which one I believe uh, to be true. In case of Chen Yufei in the quarterfinal, uh, playing uh, Hi Bing Jiao, uh, people were saying that Hi Bing Jiao, actually, or the official explanation is that Hi Bing Jiao injured her, her back. Uh, and at the time, I was calling it complete uh, BS. Um, but again, thinking about it, I, I'm I'm not 100% sure actually uh, about it because the week before in German Open, these two played each other in the uh, in the women's singles final, and they played an outstanding match. It, it was uh, high high quality, and Hipping Zhao uh, actually won that that final. And I, I would say in general, uh, she was looking to be playing better than than Chen Yufei. Um, so was it? A deliberate choice that she had to pull out. Well, it is a possibility um, to to get Chen Yufei to play Yamaguchi in that quarterfinal. Um, but again, yeah, I, I don't have the hard evidence to support it. But I, I'm a little bit more careful to to say that with 100% certainty they are abusing the rule. Um, now we have two examples, so I, I think let's let's see in a, a couple of months or six months or a year and see if we get a lot more instances, uh, and that that way we can say okay, it's it's probably not a coincidence that it, it's suddenly happening again a lot after a period of eight years where it almost didn't happen, then suddenly it's it's happening a, a lot again. So yeah, so that that's where I'm at right now. I'm I'm suspicious, but I, I'm I'm trying not to pass uh, judgment on on the Chinese. Uh, ex- exploiting the rule uh, too early Th- does that make sense yeah it make it, it makes perfect sense um and i think that you'll have to know the the backstory of of why the the why the withdrawals and stuff um before you can uh, you can judge them um but it it's it, it looks definitely looks like uh something quite suspicious um and it, it should be weird if it's just a coincidence but yeah, we'll have to see. Um, I mean, if it if it carries on, as you say, for the for the next three or six months, it just happens all the time. Then it's um, then I do not believe it's a coincidence. So the rules, the rules should definitely not be abused. Uh, that that's a, that's a big shame. Um, and I would also say that I do not believe that any player wants to lose on purpose. So I think that that's that's a um, something they have been forced to do if that's the case then it's something they have been forced to do by their federation which is just another example of why the federation should not um, have this power because every player should should have the right to do absolutely everything they can to move on to move on in a tournament and, and do as well as, uh, as as possible so I think that's um, that's abuse of power once again from the federations if this is the case um yeah yeah i completely agree and uh, that that's the main the main point about it and and also always been my main uh, reason why i i really despise the fact that the federation hold this power of entry into tournaments because if if any player is being told that you have to you have to lose this match on purpose uh, if not we will not enter you to an into an event in the future um then what, what can the player do really? You have the choice about being true to yourself and, and play that match to, to the fullest of your, uh, yeah, your, your, uh, your power, or you can, uh, and then you, you won't be able to, to carry on with your career, or you can just uh, do as the coaches say and hope it will be, uh, be you on the, the, the receiving end uh, the next time. So that, I think that, that makes perfect sense. Uh, I, I think there's two other things that, that are quite important to this situation and that it, First of all, I, I think this Zhang Yiman um, against Chen Yufei in first round, that walkover, I think we would have seen that one even if the rule had not been removed. I don't think the, the removal of the rule had any meaning uh, towards that because they don't care about the points for the first round for, for Zhang Yiman. It doesn't matter for her ranking. Uh, and the, the prize money was, uh, I think, $900. So even if the rule had still been there, I still think she would have uh, pulled out after the manager's meeting to to give Chen Yufei that that walkover. I, I hope that explanation uh, made sense. Um, the other thing now, I just uh, completely lost the plot again. Um, can you take over, Anas? I need to rethink. 
Yeah, yeah, sure I can. I mean, I think that's 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 all we have to say about uh, about this specific uh, coincidence. No, oh, okay, you're back. It here. came back to me now. Yeah, it came back to me now. Uh, I I just wanted to make it really clear because a lot of people are saying that they thought it was better now with the old rule because you would then you would see uh, more matches being played. But I, I completely disagree with that. I actually prefer these walkovers compared to matches that are uh, like fixed in the in the way of players already agreeing beforehand who's going to win or not. I, I don't want to see these matches where it's it's all, all fixed uh, before. I, in that way, I prefer walkovers. I, I prefer none of it to happen. Um, but yeah, I, I don't think it's better to see fake matches compared to, uh, to walkovers. Um, that, but that's just my opinion. But it's just to make clear that I still think even if China is going to, or any other country for that matter, is going to start doing more work always in the future, I still think it's the right thing to, to remove that other rule, which was completely unfair to, uh, to all players, basically. Yeah, we definitely saw some, some, some not fun matches to watch, where, where for instance, Kento Momota had to play down in France against uh, Kanta Sunyama while he was very injured, um, but he could not. He could not pull out. He ended up doing it anyway, but then he lost his prize money and his um and his ranking points. But I think, as you mentioned, um, if if two players from the same country is, is going to face each other, um, they are they are going to find a, another way to make it a very easy match for for the ones that, for the for the one player that they player that they want to to move on. Uh, in the tournament so then it's just being a match where the other player is making a bunch of mistakes and not doing their best so they they will find with or without this rule they will find a way to 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 give a player a very easy round and move on in the tournament which is um yeah again the only way to solve this is is to to let the player uh, be independent if they are told to uh to do stuff like this um but um yeah that's a that that's a long story. Yeah, but it's really relevant what you're saying because that's exactly what uh, I'm sure you've heard about these four men's doubles players from China who just received a uh, a ban. That's exactly what was uh, happening uh, since they got that ban. They were just playing a match where they were going. I would say they were playing at, at somewhere between twenty and forty percent of their full capacity, uh, and that that's. There's no other explanation for doing that apart from the fact that they have agreed on doing that in the match. Uh, so, so that is what we we will see if the rule is there that these players, when they play countrymen, they will just find another way to uh, to save energy uh, instead of doing a walk over. They will just play a match where you don't really uh, consume any mental energy or or a real uh, physical energy. Yeah. Okay. Can you just give us because that's that's also one of the things that we that we need to talk about. Can you give us the, the backstory of that um, penalty that some of the Chinese men's double players has just received? Yeah, it's a uh, Liu Yuchen and uh, and uh, his uh, old partner. Um, I, I just forgot his name. I don't know what's going on with my mind today. I'm forgetting everything. But uh, the guys who who made the final at the Olympics, uh, the Twin Towers, we call them, mm-hmm. uh, and then He Jin Ting and uh, his current partner, uh, whose name I also just forgot. Uh, but these <laughs> four guys played. <laughs> these four guys uh, played each other in uh, in uh, Fuzhou China Open 2018. Uh, so yeah, some time ago. Um, all, three and a half years uh, to be precise um, and they played a quarterfinal match where the intensity was just ridiculous in the first two games uh, the first game was uh, finished in uh, in just around nine minutes and the second game uh, yeah uh, i think it was eight minutes and 30 seconds i i actually just read the the 37 page report on uh, on this uh, on this case um so i should know uh, most of the details but yeah they played each other in that match and uh, they were not giving a yeah, any effort in the first two games until the referee uh, came on court and uh, and told them to to start using the the best efforts. And then the third game, they actually uh, looked to be playing at a, a much higher pace and uh, intensity. Um, so yeah, now they uh, they finally got uh, like a a verdict from BWF here three and a half years later. 
uh, which is a suspended ban of three months. Uh, so that means uh, in, a, in a probation period of two years. So if within the next two years, they do something similar uh, or something else that can be punished uh, by the laws of BWF, they will have to serve this three month ban. So for now, they don't have to serve anything, but if they do something similar within two years, from I think it was the middle of January uh, this year, they will have to serve the ban. And they also have to pay uh, back the prize money they won at the event in, uh, in China. Yeah, so so that's basically uh, basically what the case is is all about, and uh, yeah, uh, how, how it uh, how it finished. Okay, so 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 these four players were probably told to to let one of the pairs win this match. They they um, yeah they did they did just that, and they they have received here three four years later a free month ban if they do something again or. Yeah, it, that is exactly what's happened. It sounds ridiculous, and I have no idea why it took three and a half years to come to this conclusion. Uh, uh, from reading the report, um, it, it seems clear that there's been a bit of stalling time, so trying to make it take longer, but it, there's no clear explanation as to why it took so long, because the first um the first time the players were called in for uh, like a uh, like a witness statement or yeah uh, for a hearing was in uh, in december uh, the same year so december 2018 so the case already started back then the referee reported it the umpire reported it there was a uh, a player who also reported it to the to the referee uh, i was i was myself in the hall actually to watch the match and uh, i did a big post on both instagram and uh, not instagram on facebook and, and twitter um and also yeah i've also given my witness uh, statement uh, which was not used in the case by the way but yeah it, it already started in december 2018 um, and it took three and a half years before they, they came to the conclusion and yeah now it's a it's a suspended ban so they don't have to serve it and one of the guys already retired so for him it doesn't really matter he just has to pay back two thousand uh, dollars in in prize money and that's it so I would say from my point of view, it's a, uh, it's a pretty, uh, pretty weak punishment. Um, I know PWF was also trying to get them convicted for, um, it's, it's kind of match fixing, like agreeing beforehand that they would not do this, but the, the panel, which is an independent panel, they didn't find it proven that they had agreed on anything beforehand. The only thing they found to be proven was the fact that all four players did not try their best efforts, which is also against the rules. So they were only convicted for not using the best efforts. They were not convicted of anything which could be kind of match fix, uh, match fixing related. And therefore the, the punishment cannot be much harder. Um, and that, that, that's basically all you can say to defend uh, the, 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 like the scope of the punishment. Because when you read the report, BWF was actually only going for a six month ban, which was also to be suspended. So a ban they did not have to serve on, unless they, they did it again. So I don't even feel like BWF was going for a, in my eyes, a hard punishment, even if they had got everything to go the way they, uh, they wanted to. Yeah, so I think that's, um, that's our conclusion. It's, it's it's a kind of a, a weak ban, a kind of a weak punishment. Um, I think I think uh, match fixing and yeah, fixed fixed matches and and stuff like that should definitely be punished harder. I think that's uh, yeah, really putting the the sport in in a bad light. Um, so yeah, I think that should be that should be punished harder. And I don't really have much else to say to that than um, yeah, not 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 good enough job from the BWF once again. I would say. Um, but Hans Christian, uh, yeah. Yeah, can I just say one thing? I, I think that is actually positive. That is that they actually opened the case because that, that's the first time I remember they actually opened the case and has followed through with everything. So hopefully it can be in some way uh, just uh, make it a little more scary or maybe just start a proceedings that if we see matches like this, there will actually be some consequences, even though I agree that it's uh, it's not a tough enough consequence. But hopefully... 
they will not go unpunished uh, in the future. So hopefully there was, this was a small step in the, in the right direction in, in terms of that. That's what I'm hoping for at least. And it's also going to be interesting to see if the, the other rule that we just discussed, if that is um, still being abused three, six months um, from now, if they are going to to put the same rule into to, to the rule set once again um, or what what the BWF will do about it. So that's going to be interesting to follow. Um, should we wrap this podcast up with with uh, with the Swiss Open a little bit? Or I saw that uh, Jonathan Christie back on top on the podium, um, the Indonesian hero. Yeah, I heard a funny st- story about that yesterday, actually, here in Orléans, because I was on the bus with uh, Danny Bauer, uh, Krishnanta, I think his uh, full name is, from, from Singapore. Uh, but obviously, he's uh, he was born and raised in, in Indonesia. And uh, he was talking about the match and saying uh, that uh, Jojo actually had received a lot of criticism after the All England from some of the legends like uh, Rudy Hatono and uh, Lim Sui King about his game being too predictable and uh, yeah, stuff like that. And then he went on to win the Swiss Open, which is always a great way to, uh, to silence the critics. Uh, but then he also told me that uh, Taufik was, uh, was quite the, um, outspoken about uh, Christie's uh, game shortly before the Asian Games, which Christie then went on to, to win. So uh, may- maybe he just needs the, the old legends to, uh, to criticize him a bit more than he's, uh, he's winning everything, it seems. Okay, that I, I I didn't know about that. That that's a fun story, but I would say that it's not like I mean predictable. Hmm, perhaps I think he has kind of like uh, like a solid uh, game plan, and and uh, it's not it's not like um, I would say Lisi Ja or also maybe Ginting a little bit, who is kind of creative and tricky players. I think he he has a. He has a game plan that that works very well for him, and he's a very tough player to beat. I have personally played some tough and great matches with Christy. Uh, I I admire his game a lot. Um, so yeah, I, I would like to uh, I would like to t- we we should get Taufik Herayat on the podcast, and then we then we can just dis- discuss all that. Um, yeah. <laughs> You need to, you need to set that up. That would be amazing. I, I have a few other things I would like to talk to Taufik about. That's for sure. He would be uh, he would be a pretty good guest, and I'm also pretty sure that he would uh, make our channel explode if we got him on. So uh, we we should uh, work on that in the future. I would al- I would also really like to get um to get Christy on the podcast. I think um I think we should try to get Christy on the podcast for for when we go to Indonesia again, uh, just in a few months. Um, yeah, so if if we, I mean, the, our audience, if, if you're watching this, you can already start to to spam him in the comment section. Please join the the Bamton experience to get get on an episode there. But no, I'll I'll think, I'll maybe just also just WhatsApp him, text him on 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 WhatsApp, and then see if he's down to do it or not. Yeah, but like speaking of Swiss Open, we cannot wrap it up without talking about your match against uh, Street Camp because I, I was watching that online <laughs> and it is one of the the funniest matches I've seen with you because there was not one rally where you did not have some kind of reaction afterwards. Like you were, looked like a guy who was about to smash your racket at any point when you lost the point and when you won the points, uh, when it was close, you were celebrating and like I, I was just sitting behind the screen and thinking, what is going on with Anas? For, for the past few years, you've been trying to be so calm and collected on court, and this was just the complete opposite. So can, can you in any way explain what was going on in your mind? It's it's extremely complicated and difficult, and I'm not really sure yet what was actually going on inside my head. Um, I In my latest uh, YouTube vlog on, on my own YouTube channel, I... Um, I told the audience about the term tilt, which is which is a you know a mental state where you are really unstable, um, you're angry and reckless, and you basically just want want to smash your racket all the time and um, and stuff like that. And I would say that I was definitely on on heavy heavy tilt, 
during the <laughs> during that match against uh, Sh- uh, Srikant. Um, I mean, I I just I just I I really don't know. I mean, you're you're definitely right by saying that for the past few years I've turned into a little bit more of like a calm player, more calculated player. Um, and in this match I felt like I was just back to my 18, 17, 18 year old old self, where I was just um. Yeah, I mean, cra- crazy on the court, and I was, uh, I, I, I mean, everything was just annoying me so, so much, and I think basically it, it just annoyed me that Srikan was playing a very good match, and I didn't feel like I was doing that, and I really wanted to play good, um, and also the day before, I had kind of like the same feeling, I wanted to play good, I wanted to play nice badminton, but I just couldn't. Um, and that just frustrated me so much. So I think it was just adding up over time. Um, maybe also taking some of my frustrations from the week prior into this tournament and stuff. So I think it, it just reached a point where I was unable to control my emotions. Um, I was just reckless. But what what I will say is, I don't think I don't think it is a good place to be mentally f- um, long term. I think it's too too mentally draining to be to be in 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 that uh, state of mind, but I think during that match it was what I needed needed in order to um, to push Srikant. I needed to to find something. I needed to to use my anger in, in a good way. And I think um, after all my uh, I don't know outbursts is that the right word? Um, every time I screamed or did something, um, I actually had had a good good a uh, few rallies after that so i think it actually did something positive to my game yeah i would say it was also for if uh, yeah a view the viewers i think it was a a high quality match i know you don't feel like you played your best and for sure you didn't uh, but it was still really like high quality and i i just felt it was extremely entertaining to uh to watch all your antics when uh, i'm i'm so used to uh, watching a, a very different version of you and uh, if the guys out, out there haven't seen it I, I just recommend them to go watch it and especially the the final part so after the interval in the third game that is just uh yeah it's just amazing it, it's great entertainment great entertainment for sure I'm not sure if you can watch the full match. I think it's I think the match is on YouTube, but only the rallies, so you can't really see my reactions after the rallies and stuff, which is a shame. Yeah, uh, that is a shame. That is a shame. That's the best best part of the game. But you you did put the uh, like when you threw the headband uh, after the match finished, you put that on your Instagram, right? So at least people can go watch that and get a just like a small glimpse on of what was uh, what was going on. I mean, I was after almost every point that I lost. I was really considering uh, destroying my racket or st- st- starting to 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 uh, kick the the screens with the scorings and stuff. I mean, I was so so reckless. And I I, I mean, I, I wonder if if the audience thought that it was entertaining or if it was too much. I, I'm I'm happy that I did not go on and and went completely a maniac on the court uh i throw my headband yes but i did not uh, destroy my regus and and stuff but uh yeah I, I i mean i know the match was great and i think you know my mental state maybe also added a little bit extra uh, or maybe a lot extra entertainment to to the people in the crowd um there was actually quite a lot of people there the full match is on YouTube. O- oliver is showing me the full match now I think I just lost the connection here at the end. Uh, so if there was an awkward silence for me, that's why. I just said that Oliver Oliver just uh, showed me the the full match. It's on YouTube. All right, nice, nice. So people should go watch that, and especially the final part is uh, is the best part. But it, it's all it's a good match. So go go watch it. I I think at 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 I think it was like nine six in the second game was when I first really had had my first outburst. You you might be right. You might be right. I I wasn't watching uh, the entire match. I uh, I started watching after uh, after you were down. I think was it nine zero or nine one in the in the first game. Yeah, great start. Great start. Did you forget to warm up or? 
No, actually, actually not. I, I was, uh, I was, I was well prepared. Um, but uh, yeah, got got a horrible start. But let's just, uh, let, let's just end th- that talk there. Go and watch it, guys, if you want to. It's, I, I assume it's great entertain- entertainment. Uh, I will watch it again myself for sure. Um, Bottoms Christian, I think, I hope this worked out okay. Um, and I think we should wrap the episode up here. We have been on for for about an hour, so. Uh, I would just uh, finish by saying I wish you the best of luck at the Oliang and I will follow you on tournament software or YouTube or wherever I can watch the tournament. Thank you so much. And uh, it was a pleasure talking to you as always, Alice. I'll just wrap it up here to, to, to this camera, Hans Christian. Just uh, I will say I will say hi from you as well. Um, so guys, thank you very much for watching this a little bit. A different or a lot different episode of the Bampton experience um if you haven't done it please subscribe to to this channel um only this is only the second episode that we do on this new channel um yeah all the other episodes prior to this has been on my personal youtube channel Anderson Thompson, but we do it here on the Bampton experience own youtube channel from now on so go ahead subscribe to the channel leave some um, some feedback some criticism, some positive stuff, whatever you want in the comment section. We really appreciate that. And um, I hope the next episode is going to be with me and Hans Christian, both in the same room next week. I assume it will. Hans Christian is nodding his head, so I, I guess so. But for now, take care and see you in the next episode of the Bamson Experience. Bye-bye, guys.